Yo, what's going on guys? It is FoxyDude90 here. Welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today here on my channel. Today we are back with my F1 2017 career mode season 2, part 17 now for the USA Grand Prix. And uh, as you can see, Chris is coming over to us and he's talking about the development comparison. You can see how over the second half of the season, we've been making some very, very big upgrades to the Mercedes-Benz. And that has just flown it into number one on the vehicle performance comparison chart. And uh, today is also a very, very big episode because during the second half of the season, it's been quite clear to see that Ferrari, especially Sebastian Vettel, has had an absolutely shocking second half of the season. And it has allowed me to pull away massively to the point where the gap is now 107 points in the championship. And if you haven't seen last episode, I recommend going and checking it out before I explain what happened. But um, obviously, I did crash out at the Japanese Grand Prix. But something also bigger is Sebastian Vettel failed to score points and actually finished all the way down in 18th place. That means that the gap is still 107 points going to this Grand Prix, which means if Sebastian Vettel is to keep the championship alive, he actually has to beat me by more than 7 points in order to keep the championship alive. So in other words, we might be able to do a reminiscent of Lewis Hamilton in 2015 and actually win the championship here in the US. So this is a, a really big race for us. So all we've got to do is just basically beat Sebastian. Is it not, we don't even need to beat Vettel today. If the gap in the championship drops to under 100 points, the championship battle rolls on to Mexico. But if it doesn't and it stays above 100 points, the championship ends here. And that just shows how much we've been taking advantage of Ferrari's huge slump in form at the second half of the season. But moving on to practice programs then, you can see that we're just completing these. We're basically doing this for resource points now just to try and make this mercedes car as overpowered as possible uh and as you can see we're up to 730 resource points and we've now got another core competency progress which is simultaneous development as we've completed 50 practice programs in the purple which means that we now get to upgrade basically i think it's three parts of the same component so let's say we have enough to upgrade the engine power three times we can then do it three times rather than having to wait for an engine upgrade to be complete so we can move on to the next one but anyway into q1 then uh we're coming across uh, the line as it's uh, as you can see here and uh, opening up the drs here and we set a 133.1 which i don't believe was the fastest lap time uh, of all yes it was only p2 there and uh, it did say warning for corner cutting on the second to last corner, uh, which was my bad because I lost the back end and sort of just swung right into the curb. Um, but Hamilton half a second quicker in Q1 is pretty uh, pretty alarming. Um, but uh, hopefully we can try and close that down into Q2. And coming into Q2 now, we managed to get the second to last corner right this time. And uh, round there we go. And you can see Lewis Hamilton's time of 133.1 was just pipped by us. And I think we keep that. So we go fastest in Q2 to respond Lewis Hamilton's extremely quick lap uh, in Q1 and you can see here a 133.1 but Hamilton did set a 32 uh, I believe a 132.8 or something like that in Q3 so it's not all done and dusted just yet and here is my Q3 lap Q1 and Q2 I didn't feel comfortable with but Q3 this was the lap where I just hooked it up so in towards turn one then we go we want to break nice and late here and uh, dropping the car to about third gear getting on the power you can see very steady on the power as we come towards the s section now for the first time here or for the last time in fact and you can see here making sure that you don't cut any of the corners here through the s section now and you can see that we're doing a very nice job here taking a little bit too much apex here half second up in the first sector though honestly the s section didn't go too well i think i might have taken a way too much curb in one part of the s section but as much as it may feel like a little bit of a corner cut in some respects it really does put you off for the rest of the s section so even though people try and cut as much corners in those curbings doesn't actually help you that much and uh, I took too much apexes into a lot of those corners and it could have been an even better first sector but opening up the DRS now onto the back straight here this is just a nice clean simple run you don't need to complain about this all you got to do get your breaking point right which is about the 75 meter area in between the 50 and 100 meter boards Ricardo sets the fastest lap time so far and we are bang on a second quicker than what Daniel has done here and you can see the back end sliding on the exit there as uh, we try and get the power down a bit too early get a nice wide entry in here and then try and uh, floor the throttle down as quick as you possibly can. You might want a short shift through there. It could help you out. As Hamilton sets a 33.5, which we know is beatable because he set a 33.1 in Q2. And you can see second to last corner now. Absolutely flying it through here at this moment. This last sector has been almighty fast. Into the last corner we go now. A little bit wide in the last corner. Could have taken a little bit more. Open up the DRS and across the line to absolutely smash that pole position that time. And that is a great 
way to start this weekend with Sebastian Vessel needing to beat us. And we have gone and thumped pole position by eight tenths of a second. I don't know where that's come from because in Q1, Lewis Hamilton set a 32.5. But in Q2 and Q3, the AIs got slower and I got faster. So I don't know how that makes sense, but... I'll take it nonetheless. Um, really good lap there. The first sector was very, very scruffy. The S section took too much curbing in places. A little bit out of shape. The middle and final sector was hooked up brilliantly. But uh, without further ado, let's get into the race. Today, let's take a look at how the cars line up. It's Mercedes in pole position then. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Vettel, Sergio Perez and Raikkonen. Massa, Holkenberg, Sainz, and Kevin Magnussen. Stroll, Palmer, Fernando Alonso, and Grosjean. Van Dorn, Verstappen, Pascal Wehrlein, and Esteban Ocon. Ericsson, and Daniel Kvyat completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. All right, then, guys, as you can see, we're on the grid here now to start this uh, um, USA Grand Prix. And as you can see, we're going to be doing a two-stop race. We're going to be starting on the Ultra Softs, moving to a set of Super Softs, and then to another set of Super Softs at the end of the race. And as you can see now, on the formation lap, we lead the way. And, uh, yeah, I don't know when. I think it was Singapore when I last got pole position. But, anyway, as you can see, on the grid here now to start, it wasn't Singapore. And it is now... Lights out, there we go here to start this uh, USA Grand Prix. It's been a very good start for us. Putting the car into lean mixture to get us the better traction off the line. Up into Rich Reds then to get a better secondary phase of the start. And that's worked perfectly in our favour. A very clean start. Probably one of the cleanest starts of the season so far. And it's a Mercedes 1-2 now as myself leads this Grand Prix. Hamilton is in second. Ricardo is in third. Vettel in fourth. And this time you can see here through the S section. This is the this, that, that right there. That S section it was absolutely perfect. That's what I wanted to do in qualifying, but I messed it up horribly. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, that's how we wanted to do it. And uh, off to a stunning start already then in this Grand Prix as we now look to try and build ourselves an early advantage as Vettel is held up behind Daniel Ricciardo. Onto that four of the Grand Prix, Ricciardo is still holding position. And now it is a straight fight, it looks like, between me and Lewis Hamilton in this Grand Prix as we break hard into this uh, hairpin corner. And you can already see Lewis Hamilton right behind us now. And uh, he might try and size up a move here. He looks very, very close indeed. I'm going to automatically go straight away on the defensive here. And I'm already covering the inside line in towards the hairpin. Hamilton has got DRS and you can see very, very defensive here. And in towards the hairpin. Hamilton's got great straight line speed. Uh, but we've got the inside line and we do manage to defend from Lewis Hamilton. A very easy defensive maneuver there. But already an early warning, warning sign here on lap four from Lewis Hamilton. There's sort of like a statement of intent here that he's looking to attack. Onto lap seven of the Grand Prix now. And the safety car has been deployed because of an incident with Felipe Massa. And he's out of the Grand Prix. And that hasn't actually worked in my favour. Lewis Hamilton pitted at the end of lap five. And I have actually continued onwards. My pit stop was at the end of lap six. We're on lap seven now. Hamilton is stuck in traffic at the moment. And I was looking to basically stay out for as long as I could. And basically build in a gap whilst Hamilton was stuck in the traffic. But unfortunately, the safety car is going to put pay to that. And... Uh, a little bit frustrated about that. We're coming into the pits now, uh, making sure that we uh, do, do not go uh, faster than the safety car. Because if you go uh, quicker than the safety car delta time and then rush into the pits, you will get a drive-through penalty for speeding under the safety car. So you can't do that this year. You've got to make sure that you're in the delta. And it's a lot harder around the USA because, of course, you sort of, like, cut the final corner to get into the pits. So, um, yeah, it's uh, very, very um, frustrating that. So, uh as you can see then, coming out of the pits, I believe that's a Williams car going in front of us. But we have rejoined, it's purchasedly Sergio Perez. We have rejoined in front of Lewis Hamilton, crucially, as we go very, very wide. He's in that train just behind. Uh, so as we start falling back now from the safety car, we've managed to jump Lewis Hamilton. But with him in traffic, we now need to escort our way through the... I've just seen him there on the back of your screens. But now, Ricardo leads this race. Raikkonen in second, Vettel third, and Perez fourth. However... Uh, Ricardo, Perez, and Raikkonen are yet to make a stop. Vettel, too, yet to make a stop. But I believe Vettel is on the super softs and looking to do a one stop in this race uh, and then move over to a set of soft tyres. So technically, he can go longer in this race and, and uh, basically uh, less damage 
to his race. But we go very wild on the second to last corner. But we get a great run out of the last corner here. Rich Revs now enabled. And we're going to go back racing here. Green flags once again now as we get into the century with Sergio Perez. Running quite a little bit more down for here. But in towards this breaking point, we go down the inside of Perez and down the inside of Vettel. A brilliant double overtake there. And that is our championship rival as well. Done and dusted and out the window. And our fresh super soft tyres. Next up is Kimi Raikkonen and Daniel Ricciardo. And further on to lap 10 now. We're catching up to the back of the pair of them now. And in towards the hairpin. Will we go for it on Kimi Raikkonen? Not just yet. You know, I've, I've decided I'm going to play a little bit cautious here. And I'm going to wait my time on this one. And I know a very good spot to do it. So we go very, very late on the brakes here. And uh, seeing that, I realised that if I'm going to break that late into corners, I'm going to do it down the inside here on Kimi Raikkonen into this left-hander. And we get the move done. And Daniel Ricciardo is next on my hit list. Vettel has already cleared Perez. In fact, no, Vettel is already in front of Perez. So he doesn't need to clear him. Um, but Vettel is on Super Soft. So he's going to be going until about lap 13, lap 14, something like that. So he is going to have to clear some traffic as Ricardo makes his pit stop, which puts him pretty much out of contention at this stage of the race um, because he's going to be so far back. It's kind of useless to do that, really. Um, but Vettel also now stays out with me, and um, the two championship rivals lead the way. But on to lap 12 of the Grand Prix now, Vettel has actually made his pit stop. Lewis Hamilton is now up into second place, but he is now a long way back. As Sergio Perez is out of the USA Grand Prix, which I believe he was out in the last race as well. So... Not much luck going for Sergio Perez at the moment, but everything going smoothly for myself. On to lap 18 of the Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton has now made his second pit stop for a set of soft tyres, crucially. Not the super softs, as Ricardo is still out there at the moment, but I believe he is still yet to make his second and final pit stop. As we come into the pits now for what will be our final stop of the Grand Prix. And uh, we're going to be going for a brand new set of super soft tyres going to the end of the race, which means now that we are going to have the tyre advantage over Lewis Hamilton, because for some reason Hamilton thought, I'm going to pit for a set of soft tyres, when really if you're going to do the soft tyres at any point in this race, you're going to be wanting to do a one stop on that one, so very strange stuff there from Hamilton, but to be honest, that doesn't bother me. He actually goes and sets the fast lap of the race as well, just to try and prove his point here, as in towards turn one we go now, and uh, the gap is about four seconds, I'd say. To Lewis Hamilton, so uh, still pretty close between myself and Lewis. Onto the second, onto lap 21 of the Grand Prix now. Coming around the second to last corner now, and uh, towards the final corner, I decided to have a little bit of fun in this Grand Prix. Uh, Vettel is now up into third place, and we go across the line to set the fastest lap of the race so far on a 135 flat. Uh, basically, just to enjoy myself on my fresh super soft tyres. Might as well just absolutely destroy the life out of them. And uh, onto lap 24, we're catching up to one of the Saubers here. And just look at the speed that we're carrying through this S section compared to Marcus Ericsson. It's incredible how fast we can get through there. Unfortunately, it does compromise my S section quite a lot. But um, at this stage of the race, my tyres were starting to go away. Uh, mainly because I was just absolutely rinsing them. And onto the last lap of the Grand Prix then. It has been a perfect bounce back from the Japanese Grand Prix failure. And towards the checkered flag now to cross the line. We win the USA Grand Prix. We beat Sebastian Vettel. And that is the championship done and dusted here at the USA. And I am so happy to have wrapped it up. And so the celebrations begin. And well earned they are indeed. It may have looked simple at times. But as any racing driver will tell you. Competing at this level at the very top is anything but simple. There's no counting them now then. We have a new... World Drivers Champion. I would just like to give a massive shout out to Mercedes Benz for giving me the best car on the grid. It's been absolutely amazing. I also want to give a shout out again to Mercedes Benz for allowing me to have a car that can actually do donuts compared to a Ferrari which can't do donuts as we proved in season one when we won the championship and the Ferrari failed to do a goddamn donut. So Mercedes is already better than Ferrari in every aspect because it's got a better power unit and it can do donuts. They're done and dusted. If, if a car can't do donuts, it doesn't suit me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, but there it is, guys. We have won the race and the championship is done and dusted. And uh, for the last few races, then, we get to just have some fun. And uh, that will be uh, very enjoyable for us here. And as you can see, then, celebrating, I'm pretty sure Sebastian wouldn't be that happy. But, yeah, I don't really know what's been going on with Ferrari. It's something that I definitely need to have a look at. But this second half of the season... Ferrari have been terrible. I mean, where is Kimi Raikkonen? Um, but in the driver standings then, Sebastian Vettel now needs to actually look at Lewis Hamilton because the championship is now done and dusted. But the gap between Vettel and Hamilton 
it's only about, it's only, it's not that much. It's about 17, 18 points, something like that. In the Constructor standings, we are still going to be pushing very, very hard because the Constructors is not done and dusted yet. I want to get it done and dusted to make sure that we win both championships with Mercedes-Benz. And we're close to beating Vettel in the rivalry. And you can see now that the most interested teams are Haas, McLaren and Sauber. And as you can see, then picking up all of our championship points. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for today, today's F1 2017 career mode video. I do believe that we make an upgrade to the chassis because why not make the Mercedes more OP. Uh, and basically, I'm putting these upgrades on to help Hamilton beat better the championship. Because I still believe after Hamilton's horrid start to the season, he can come back and also beat Sebastian Vettel. So there goes the upgrades. And uh, I will see you guys for the next time in the, what is it? The Mexican Grand Prix. So until then, guys, take care all. Peace.